Hello, everyone. Um, I'm just going to start talking because that's what I love to do. Um, and I encourage you all to also follow your passions. Um, <clears throat> but um, I think typically these meetings are going to have probably like a five minute grace period to reward people who are late and punish people who are on time. Um, but since this is our first meeting, I was wondering if anyone about this book, um, I was wondering if if uh, anyone's read it and is, you know, coming back for a refresher on the book or just has any opinions on the book, The Man, Bayes, or anything, or just wants to introduce themselves. Um, I'll go first. I... Uh... I have not, okay, first of all, I'm Tony. I work as a data scientist. Uh, I have not read this book, but I have taken a class on base statistics. In that class we used, I think it was like open bugs or something like that. And I don't think there was an actual textbook for that class. It was just like all lecture notes. So I don't know, I've heard plenty of great things about this book. I assume it won't be like too different from what I've learned already, but that class was like three years ago, I think and just be kind of a nice refresher. Uh, hopefully a modern take as well, uh, using like actual modern R code, that'd be really nice. Tony, have you done any projects with Bayes that pertain to any big sports? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've done the, you know, we used a little bit of, I guess, Bayes with the, uh, in the NFL Big Data Bowl last year. Um, we used a BART model, Bayesian additive regression trees. Um, you don't have to know a bunch about Bayes to, to use that though. You just know how to yeah. install a package <laughs> and use the package. Uh, cool. I've used, a, I've used like, a, most of the time when I've used Bayes, it's like the empirical Bayes stuff using like what David Robinson has shown with his, his book on empirical Bayes, uh, using that often for like adjusting for small sample sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like, honestly, like if you know that book or read that book, knowing like, how to use the beta distribution is like so important. Uh, it covers a lot of like use cases. Uh, yeah. So I'm not sure I heard your whole question because I got here a little late, but I think you were asking if People have read the book before. I I have the first edition. I I started it and didn't get very far. So looking forward to um, having maybe an easier way to get into it with the the, the video lectures and this book group. I don't actually know what I would ever use this for. It's more I'm curious about it. Um, but you never know when this when the skills come. Sometimes the problems come after. Yeah, well, according to um, the author of the book, Richard McElreath, um, I think a lot of the things in the book should be commonplace. So it seems like he's going to say, if you're doing statistical analyses, you should be familiar with his book, yeah. which is uh, you know, a good thing for an author to say. Um, all right, well, my, I guess the, uh, not I guess, I know that the co- <clears throat> co-host, I guess that's not the correct word, is here. So I'm going to cede the floor. If you, wanna, if you have any introductory things to say. Um, all right. So hi, everyone. I'm Mikhail. I'm currently doing my PhD in the Netherlands. So in my daily work, I've, um, I've been doing quite some data analysis, mostly for genomics, so on gene expression, and uh, nowadays on single cell gene expression. I mean, I've also been doing some epidemiology work. And then um, at those times, because uh, I was working with um, a lot of missing values. So I heard that, well, if we do multiple imputation and average all the estimates from the uh, pulled data, then it will be a better way to do such analysis, but I have totally no clue about base. And, you know, after um, reading all the 
um, post related to base, especially by um, I, what was her name? Chelsea, I think, uh, all the memes and stuff like that. I was really intrigued by base, but then, you know, it's only resides in my brain as a meme, not something that can be, that I can practice yet. And yeah, I hope uh, by doing this um, book club, I would be able to, uh, you know, understand base more rather than just regard it regurgitating what other has said like well base is better than frequentist because it uses all the information and so on well i don't really understand that i mean that's not my own understanding just um take what other people have said before so hopefully i would be a step step closer to that so by co-hosting this book club doesn't mean that i have any experience related to base but i would like to learn together with all of you so. All right, so I guess this is the proportion, the proportion, the portion where we are going to somewhat, somewhat, at least, at least somewhat democratically decide the shape of this book club. Um, so I don't know if, if any of you saw like the original idea of the book club or not, not even of the book club, but just of this lecture series is to, um, well, okay, I guess I don't know what other people know. So to start at the very beginning, there's, there are two editions of this book, Statistical Rethinking, and uh, they're both, both very good. And Richard McElreath has provided a lot of video lectures for this. I think that he's teaching this book probably every semester. Um, but with the most recent teaching of it, He's um, releasing two video lectures a week. And then he is hosting his own, what's called like a flipped classroom, where he's going over problem sets with people who have watched these lectures, presumably. And so I think that this book club was inspired by, it's almost kind of like the original idea was that this would be like an overflow session for that um, because uh, the registration for that closed a long time ago. And so this would make, you know, if we were to do that, this book club would have a fairly different structure. than, as far as I know, all other book clubs, because where most other book clubs are presentation based, this would be more of a, you watch McElroy's lectures, read the book, neither on your own time. And then we come together, <laughs> we convene to talk about the problems, to have more of a discussion time. And so I don't know if any of you, well, I'm gonna solicit from all of you or from anyone who wants to chime in. Uh, do you have any opinions about that? Do you think that's a, like a, something that just uh, is not gonna work? Um, because I know I do have interest in that. I, I like the active learning approach, but um, maybe some of you think that the, you know, weekly Zoom meetings for some reason aren't congenial to that. So I'll be open to hearing any objections or doubts or disappointments what would be the alternative to that because that seems like i like that idea but i'm like what if we what is, is it like is the alternative um us just kind of reading maybe one at a like one chapter at a time um or even going at a slower pace if that's kind of what fits us or even separating meetings making them bi-weekly if if that's easier for people I, I guess I'm just curious what the alternative would be. Um, so, you know, so, so Mick Alvey's book is like a lot of books where there's the big part of the chapter and there's the chapter, I guess, per se. And then there's the, the exercises at the end. And then also as a part of this uh, flipped classroom, I guess, spring 2022 session for people in the Northern Hemisphere, he's releasing additional problem sets. That he goes over in his his lectures or his, yeah um and so by okay, by way of comparison i'm also in another book club the the islr introduction to statistical learning with applications in r and in that club the weekly meetings are really people presenting the chapter itself the material in the chapter itself so that would be an alternative is have people present the material um but i think in this case it would be a bit presumptuous because Miguel is already producing his own lectures, which are 
well, very well done. I mean, not only do they embody the expertise of the author himself, but just the production value is extremely high. Um, but the alternative would be to have people present the material. I just think that in this particular case, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But I guess, and but I'm glad that you're you're fine with this. But I guess I want to know. I, I would be happy to know any dissenting opinions about, or just things, ways that people think, you know, weekly discussion of the problems could uh, go off rails or something like that, so that we can guard against that. Uh, yeah, I I have an idea or a thought. Um, what if we kind of combine the two approaches in the sense that, like, from my understanding, there's going to be like weekly homework release on that GitHub repository. So maybe we could, you know, have volunteers to tackle like one or two problems or something like that, and then kind of present their solutions and or their partial solutions or whatever, and we can we can work through that together. Uh, yeah, yes, I think that would be good. And so by combining, you sort of mean combining stylistically, because really, yeah, because so in let's say sense, I do problem presenting. one, I could like show my solution and talk about how I came up with it. So I'm kind of presenting my solution, but also potentially we work out a solution together if not everybody's solved it or something. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that, um, yes, it's definitely good for, I think that would be a good way to do it. We definitely need people to be, we need to ensure that at least someone comes in at least one person in the group comes into the session with the answer for, for all the problems. Sorry, that wasn't phrased. The quantification that what I just said was wrong. For every single problem, at least one person in the group needs to have an answer. I think that would be, that'd be one way it could fail if that fails to obtain. So yeah, so I think that's good. I think that we should avoid the diffusion of responsibility. Some people get certain problems. I honestly, on my own, hope, aspire to do all the problems myself. So hopefully that could be a backstop, but uh, I certainly don't want to present every single problem. Uh, but no, I think that's good. So are people okay? Uh, I, I, we can't, I don't know if I can do a poll right now, but are people just in general positive? Are they positively disposed toward just having this be like a problem focused weekly meeting? Yeah, yeah I think it's good. Yeah, I like that. It might be yes, interesting oh, go ahead, Ken. to have different styles too, because um, McElrath has his own style, which is fairly um, traditional R coding style. And I know somebody said they were looking forward to seeing modern code, and I'm not sure that's a good place, but um, there's also several other styles. I know there's a, a companion that goes through all the examples in the book in a Tiverse style. And that would be another way to solve the problems. So it might be interesting to have even more than one presentation on each problem and see a diversity of, um, of methodology for, sol for solving them. Okay, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, okay, so there's that. So I think, um, a few more practical things that we can talk about, uh, that we should talk about, are pacing. Um, so, Miguel, I, I always said Miguel Reith, but I guess Miguel Reith. Uh, I need to get the right vowel in there. Um, he's, you know, I would, I don't know if I can say blazing through the book, but uh, in his presentations, he's doing two chapters a week, and I, I doubt that that's sustainable for us, um, just because I know at least I have other obligations and I assume that everyone else does. So I think one chapter a week, um, it sounds slow, but um, it's pretty heady stuff. So I think that could be good, but it is gonna present some problems when it comes to doing the problems, just because the problem sets are designed for his pace so that so I haven't like looked at this in detail but you know so each problem set 
corresponds to a week of his time, which is two chapters. So that it just, you know, maybe is a little bit uncomfortable. One thing I was thinking is that his book, which does correspond to his lectures, actually does have problem sets for each chapter. So one thing that we might want to do is actually get some problems from the book and work on those together as well. Um, and that would just require someone, and I'm happy to do this, um, getting those problems out and supplying the group with like a common problem set. Um, and what one nice thing there is that he has these graded, graded in the sense of, okay, graded in difficulty problems where there's the easy ones that are basically comprehension questions, medium, and then, you know, hard or advanced, which are really taking in the ball further. Um, and so there, what we could do is have maybe a sign-up sheet where someone finds what they think is an interesting problem and presents it. Um, and then, I don't know. So at this point, things get a little bit messier, but I don't expect anyone to have like dug into this and have a solution. Justin right. and Mikhail, with other book clubs, we always have a R4DS learning community GitHub repo. I haven't witnessed one yet, or maybe it hasn't been created yet. Um, currently, all the, the Slack channel are pointing at uh, McCarrath's uh, uh, teaching GitHub page, uh, which is a link to the videos. I do recommend going that route too. But um, do we have a central location within our community to post or host uh, any shared files? I'm thinking about the homework assignments and, and even um, who's uh, scheduled to deliver for that week. That always seems to be a, uh, a speed bump for most of our book clubs. Um, so yes, so Tony just posted in the chat. Oh, thank a, you. Uh, yeah, so this is something that John is currently helping us out with. So it, it, it will exist, it will exist. I like the idea of doing the some of the exercises from the book, maybe at least in the off weeks. And then when we're at a week where we are synced up with the, the weekly lectures, maybe we would do the exercises that are assigned for the class. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, if somebody would post those homework problems, that would be great, because um, I do not plan on I just looked at the price of the book and it's like $80 on the website. I do oh. not plan on buying that. Um, right. So for, so for the off just, weeks. Yeah. I think I'll just stick to the, the video lectures and the, the homework problems there, but. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I was, I was planning on uh, handling that. So don't worry about that, but that is a good point. Uh, just something to keep in mind with that. And also, like, for example, if we put our sol some solutions in the repository, um, I, I'm, you know, w is that okay with the author? Because I would hate to, like, post, you know, parts of his book and then, or solutions when he doesn't want that. Yeah, I was just thinking that about the, the homework, like, problem sets. Like, I don't know if that's, because it's not an open source, like, book, I don't know how that would work, but... Mm. I'll let somebody else handle that. Yeah, yeah, uh, I guess Good I, we should ask John, because I mean, regardless of what we do, actually, it could be uh, thorny, because I mean, regardless, even if we don't post anything uh, textually, you know, we are gonna, these videos will become public, by the way, I hope everyone knows that, these videos will be public and we're gonna be talking about the answers. So, so I'll ask John about that, yeah. I don't think it's gonna, you know, prevent this book club from happening, but uh, it'll be good to know what the best best practices are. Um, okay, so I'm trying to think if there's anything more. Mikhail, do you know of anything else? Or can you think of anything else that we need to resolve? Or because right now, I think what would happen is. We would, um, yeah, there's stuff going on in the chat. 
uh, you know, right now what we would do is, I guess what we need to decide what we want to do for the first chapter is um, for the first chapter, there are no problems uh, either in the book or in the elsewhere. Yeah. So, um, so I guess we should first decide what we want to do there. But I will say the first chapter is not just because there are no problems. That doesn't mean that it has no content. Uh, I think that he introduces a lot of stuff in the first chapter slash first video lecture. I'm just going to use chapter regardless of whether I'm we'll talking about the book or the, the video lecture series. Um, but a lot of stuff is introduced there that comes back. So I wouldn't recommend skipping it. Um, but so that does mean that for next week, we could either meet to discuss the first chapter, or we could say, read slash watch chapters one and two. And uh, we'll present problems with solutions. Any feelings about, any thoughts about those two options? So I don't completely get, so, so what's the current consensus are. So are we going to follow the topical outline that is provided in the GitHub or following the chapters um, as in the book? Because I think the book has 17 chapters in total, right? Whereas the uh, lecture schedule has 10 weeks. So which um, system are we going to follow? Because I think it will also affect how we're going to pace this book club. Uh, I, I was under the, under the understanding, under the impression that we were, gonna, we were going to do one chapter a week. Okay. All right. okay. So that means that we'll, by the end of this, we'll be pretty good friends because we'll be with each other for 17 weeks. And then one week for, okay. So one week for one chapter. So the materials and the problems. Yeah. Yeah. Does that pace sound too fast for anybody? So- Well, well one... I'm not sure because I'm also doing the regression and other stories and by the middle of the book, then, well, I drop out for due to personal reasons because it simply takes too long. 70 weeks is a long uh, commitment. And yeah, I'm not, and like what you said as well, reading three chapters in a week and sometimes the chapters can be really dense. It's also may not be feasible for many people. So I guess there's no perfect um, plan, but uh, one chapter per week is also um, good, I think. Yeah, I just think that um, attrition is going to be a problem either way. I just think it's going to be really bad if we try to do two or three chapters a week, and then we shouldn't be surprised if there's no one left remaining after two weeks. That's true. Just the McHale and team, one of the, the difficulties, I guess, with the ISLR program or book club was the... Oh, how do I say it? Not aptitude, the depth of the subject matter. Um, it is very in-depth in relation to not being topical. Um, these are some very deep dive uh, foundational core statistical type uh, methodology. The timing, uh, at least with ISLR, it seems to be, um, we were trying to relay back and forth between chapter versus exercises, and then it just spread out, doubled over um, its length. Uh, do you have any comments, Justin? I know you presented uh, here just recently, I think chapter four, maybe chapter five. Um, how, how much commitment, I guess, did you have for that um, display or, or, or presentation? How much commitment, even how much time it took me to yeah, how, how long did it, it, it actually invest in brain power to, to building that presentation? Um, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm a very slow person. So it took me a while. Uh, no, but it, but I think this will be a little bit different. I mean, one of the things that we're gonna save a lot of time with, I think, is not making presentations, really. Um, you know, we might share our screen, some, I don't know, like someone, I would not be upset if someone just took a, a piece of paper and, you know, just like was like waving it around, like, look, here are my, here are my matrices, you know, um, 
like uh, I'm not, no one needs to learn LaTeX, I think, to show a solution here. By the way, I see a, so anyway, so just to wrap this up, um, I, I think that, you know, maybe some of the problems are going to be really difficult and that will take time, but it'll be, even if you're presenting what I, what I guess I'm trying to say is that you don't need to spend any time on your presentation. Um, maybe you rehearse it once just to make sure that your ideas are clear to yourself, but um, there's no aesthetic requirements here. Oh, sorry, I saw a question that I don't wanna, maybe it was the hand up that was from a while ago. It has right, since disappeared. Uh, no, it was, oh. it, it was me. Can you hear me? Okay, hello. Yes, yeah. I can hear Hi. Um, so I just wanted to say I was um, uh, trying to, uh, to encourage you that I, I started actually uh, this book, uh, reading this book again uh, two weeks ago when the actual the, the presentation started showing up. Um, and the first, so the first two Papa? chapters, oh, sorry. the first two chapters, are, that's my son, uh, sir. Uh, the first two chapters are actually uh, really introductory. And the homework that you see on the site it relates to the third chapter. So there aren't any sort of uh, complicated stuff. I think this for me, I mean, I'm not, by any means, I'm not an expert in, in, in Bayesian statistics. So uh, I just want to encourage everybody. It's, it's not that difficult as it seems. Um, the first two chapters are really just the motivations for the book and why, uh, and some, some basic examples of how things are, you know, working. But the actual sort of computation and algorithms and stuff begins in chapter three. Um, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Okay, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, yes. Okay, so the, the part about the problems. So actually, I didn't know that. I assumed that the problems were from chapters one through three, but I guess in a way they are just with zero contributions from chapters one and two. Um, but in the, but so I guess, okay, wait, um, oh, sorry, I'm realizing that I, I just, does anyone have any uh, thoughts about the chapter one or, or what we want to do next week? Um, again, with the most, the options that occur to me immediately are discuss chapter one or discuss or really sort of not discuss chapters, but just start, you know, do a dive into a chapter two and present problems from chapter two. Any thoughts about those two options or, you know, something that I didn't mention? I'm personally fine with both. Just but I think we should start doing problems because <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like if we stall, I mean, not stall, but like, uh, one week of discussion, I don't know, my, in my experience, it's like not always the most productive because I feel like you just, I, I, for me, at least I just want to get started. So I don't know, I'd be in favor uh, of just starting with problems. I agree. And I think, uh, especially with the video lectures up too, there's, and you know, if, if you do or do not want to download the book, like there's multiple ways for you to get the same information and i think if there's still like confusion or people want to hash things out like we have the slack channel for that i think it maybe will just make the best use of everybody's time to do the problems i also agree because we have 17 weeks to go and we should get quick fast all right um just okay, looking so at the homework for the first week, and I think the first two problems are based on chapter two. Um, so that might be a place to start, and then, then we could do the second two problems the next week. Yeah, I was going to pepper the uh, problem set that he's posted with some of his own problems from the book, mm -hmm. just because I feel like that would be pretty scarce if we did just two problems yeah. next week. Um, even, so, in but, the, even in the PDF, he suggested first try to finish the easy in from the book and then maybe come to those uh, what he posts in the homeworks. Yeah, I think that's, I think he's definitely right. Because I, I did look at his posted problems and at least the very last problem 
that's posted um, in the set is, is pretty heady. It's some pretty intense stuff. So we should probably work up to it. Um, all right, I don't, this is, this is a hard thing to do. This is a difficult survey moment because I can't tell if just like there's a group of people who drank Red Bull right before this. So they're both motivated to respond and to say we should do the problem set next week. This is like a highly biased sample. Um, so, so feel free to, to write to me privately, I guess, if you don't want to do that. And because I have absolutely no judgment about anybody, unless you're going to, well, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so don't feel like you need to, you're not, you're not being bulldozed over by the, the Red Bull drinking faction of our group. Um, but, but yeah, I'm gonna, but just for my own preparation, I'm gonna prepare um, materials for us to meet next week and discuss, uh, no, sorry, not discuss, but go through chapter two. And um, so we should also figure out then how we want to assign um, problems for people to present. You know, I would definitely like to hear different people with different perspectives presenting different problems. Um, anyone have an opinion on just, you know, Google Sheets occurs to me as a very basic way to do that. Um, and either you can suggest a problem that you want to solve, I think that's probably the best. And then we just try to make sure that there's some mix of easy, medium and hard problems. Um, and maybe we want to set a limit because, you know, we have an hour to meet. Um, and so we want to not go over that. So, but maybe that's something that we can negotiate as we go, just in case someone, you know, say the name's Justin, they're just always saying, I want to present, I want to present, I want to present. We need to tell that person to put the brakes on. Um, but I think that's small enough that that could happen informally. Um, does anyone have any thoughts about that? I think that sounds pretty reasonable. Good. I strive for reasonability. I think the other book groups, do they use the um, GitHub repo for signing up for chapters? That's maybe a little heavyweight for signing up for problems and maybe Google Sheets is better, but just as an alternative. Yeah, I, I've had bad experiences with uh, using GitHub repos to sign up for things because then it turns into like pull requests and then people don't attend yeah, to it. It seems a little heavyweight. Mm -hmm. It seems heavyweight, that's the, yes. So I, I think I'm gonna try to do Google Sheets. I don't know how I'll structure it yet, I guess Mikael and I can talk about this yeah. and figure or it out. Or maybe we think... can just uh, put in the Slack channel. So uh, let's say just give a number uh, one to 10, for example, and then people can vote. And then so it's easily trackable. And we can also know like for one question, okay, how many people are interested to answer this question? Because for if you do it in the Google Sheet, well, it will be a long format or wide format. It will be a bit... Uh, messy. If you, um, let's say I want to insert, okay, Mikhail wants to answer question one, two, three, and other people wants to two, three, four, then we don't really know, okay, so how many people are going to answer question two, and so on. I think it's easier to track the interest um, if we just do it in the Slack. Um, yeah, I'm just going to share my screen for a second just to show in case someone hasn't for those people who haven't looked at the at the book like this is what so i hope i intend that you all can you all can see my screen now so this is what a typical end of chapter practice set looks like in the book um so it's you know this is for chapter two um so there are these easy problems which you can see you're learning how to express conditional probability and there's a kind of conceptual one. Then you've got medium problems and you've got hard problems. And so one thing that we're, and we're not gonna be able to talk about all of these, um, it would take far more than an hour. So there's gonna have to be a, this 
possibly two-part process where we decide what problems are going to be discussed and then who will discuss them. And I say possibly two-part because it could be one part. It could just be the a person who wants to present the problem proposes that we discuss that problem. Um, so so that that's the particular that's the needle we're trying to thread here. Um, does that so Mikhail, does that change what you were saying about using the Slack channel? Um, I don't know. To me, Google Sheets, something about the staticness of Google Sheets seems conducive to organizing this. But I'm also like a very poor Slack user. So maybe, but maybe other people are as well. So I don't know. Well, we can just adapt as we go along, right? We can just start with Google Sheet and then um, maybe we can improvise later on. We don't have to set everything in stone from the beginning. Right. Oh yeah, I think that, I think the provisional approach is definitely the way to go. Okay, so provisionally, next week we're going to work through some problems. Some people are going to work through some problems in chapter two and we will reconvene to discuss them. Um, and I will put a Google Sheet in the chat, in the Slack channel. Any, anything that needs to be said before we disband? I just want to ask that if, if the book club that I'm signing right now is advanced, I don't know if the book is advanced for me, um, like compared to uh, ISLR, do you think um, statistical rethinking is advanced or not? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, um, it's, it's a book that requires thinking. I, it actually, I don't know how to, so it mixes beginner and advanced things in a pretty atypical way. Like by the end of this book, you'll definitely be doing things that at least I can say as part of my a PhD program in a political science, like if you just were capable of doing these things, you would have quite a few quantitative social scientists like, wow, that's really impressive that you're doing that, right? People with, like people with PhDs. But at the same time, I feel like it's presented very well. So I, I think I'm trying to say that you should use, you should think of that as an incentive, not as a disincentive for reading this book. But it is definitely, some parts are kind of slow going. And I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to just make inferences based on my own experiences, but I've definitely reread quite I read certain parts quite a few times. So it's not like a page turner. I mean, it's good. It could be a page turner if I were smarter. Uh, but, uh, but for my particular level of intelligence, it's not a page turner. Uh, thank you then. Um, so it must be not like quantum physics or something like that. <laughs> no, I would, like, I would like say for a guy. Oh, go on. Oh, okay. I'll just finish real quick. As the prerequisites, I don't think are are that high, are are that onerous. Yeah, I was gonna say like like a average guy like me who's like has undergraduate degree, so it it wouldn't be like quantum physics. Then that's fine, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions or comments? Just thank you, Justin and Mikhail for doing a great job getting us going. All right, well, that'll really be tested next week, but- It'll be it's promising, I'd say a promising beginning, so thank you. A strong prior. Can I just say yeah. that I love Justin? I love your sense of humor. Like I, <laughs> he told me I was laughing a lot there. 
<laughs> the absolutely dry sense of humor there just got me. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that you didn't hate it. <laughs> well, that'd be rude if you said that, though. You can also you can also send me a private message if you hated it, by the way, as well. <laughs> because as mean as that sounds, it's useful information for me. Um, all right, Mikhail, I'm not going to unilaterally close this meeting. So do you have any anything you want to add? Um, no, not of any significance now. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just, well, I reminded about the ISLR stuff before. Um, to me, ISLR it seems like a book that you can read maybe like chapter one and then you can skip, skip to chapter five and then you don't feel that lost. But then to me, as it's great thinking seems to be a book that you need to read from the cover to cover because I think he basically gives you a complete storyline of um, things from the beginning to build up and so on. And I guess the most important thing in this book club is that um, we shouldn't leave anyone behind because um, if um, well, if we are lacking in one chapter, it can hurt our understanding for the next uh, one. So yeah, I guess just like what Justin said, um just reach out if um you don't uh, completely comprehend uh something i may be guilty of that in the future so yeah i guess uh let's just learn together as much as we can all right that was a very beautiful sentiment and i will honor it as the best of my ability but i think we should close with that all right. Well, everybody, I'll see you in the Slack channel and I'll see you all next week as well. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.